Today, I want to begin to share with you on legalities. Hallelujah. Somebody say legalities. Legalities. Say it again, legalities. Legalities. And um, I don't think I'm going to be able to knock this off in one go. So I believe we might have two parts of this, or maybe possibly three. You never know. Amen. <laughs> Because there is so much to talk about on this subject. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Are we ready, Papa? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory. Remember that we began to speak two Sundays ago on the laws of creation. Amen. Somebody say the laws of creation. The laws of creation. And we spoke concerning natural laws and spiritual laws. Amen. And all these laws are the laws that govern life. Amen. And the human experience. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. But today, I made you understand from last time that these laws are also referred to as legalities. Somebody say legalities. 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 When we say legalities, we're using a, a judicial term. Are you listening to me here? Are we here, Papa? And you have to understand that within the system of the universe, there is the ju judicial system of the universe. Wow. wow. There is the courts of the heavens. There is the courts of the earth. And there is the courts of the universe. Wow. That's deep, Papa. Teach us, Teach us, Are Papa. you listening to me here? Are we here, Papa? Because when you speak about laws, then they need a system of execution. Wow. That's deep. I don't Are know if here, I have Papa? people here. Whenever you start talking about laws, that means it comes from a system. And the system that governs laws is known as the judicial system. So in the heavens, you have the judge who is God, who is the ultimate judge. Then in the earth realm, we also have the judges of the earth realm, Amen. which are men. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. Then also, there is also the universe as a judge. Wow. Wow. That's deep. That's deep, Papa. That's deep. Are you still with me? Oh, we're here, Papa. So when you look at certain happenings of life, you get to understand that the universe actually judges men. Wow. That is why there's such a system known as, or such a belief known as karma. Wow. And karma has... And in fact, that whatever you put into the world, the universe will give it back to you. Wow. Because the universe has been placed here also as a judge. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. So what God does not intend to judge, the universe might intend to judge. Wow. So when we get our judgment of salvation from sin and hell from God... And we are discharged and acquitted by God because of the sacrifice Jesus made. That does not mean that you have escaped all judgments. Wow. Because there is still the place of the judgment of men. Wow. That when you steal something, they take you to court. That's true. Are That's you still true. there? We're here, When Papa. you do something that goes against the laws and the systems of God on this earth, they take you to court. It is the same with the laws of the universe. Wow. That when you do something that goes against the structure of the universe and the system of the universe, the universe also stands as a judge. Wow. That's deep. That's deep, Papa. These are the things many people don't understand. So when we talk about laws, they think that we're just dealing with the laws of God per se. There are the laws of this universe. And when you go against them, it doesn't matter if you have been saved from hell. It doesn't matter if you've been saved from sin. You can still get consequences in life because you broke certain laws of this universe. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Am I talking to somebody here? Are oh, you speaking to me, Papa? So if your understanding about laws only, you know, comes from what you were told in Sunday school or Bible school, Concerning the laws of, <laughs> of Moses and how we've been discharged from laws and things like that. Please understand, these are not the only laws there are in this world. Wow. And in the systems of God. That's deep. 
the universe also stands as a judge. Wow. And that's why I began to teach you concerning the universe. So you understand that the universe is not just a place. It's a being. Wow. It's a being. And those in the new age realm have actually come to a certain understanding about these things. Wow. When you don't know this as a believer, you don't understand why you're praying all your prayers, believing that, you know, you've been born again, set apart, delivered from all darkness, yet you are still facing troubles in your life. Wow. That's you do deep. not understand that there are laws you may be breaking, even as a Christian, that goes against the laws of the universe, and you will suffer for it. Wow. That's deep. And if you don't have a man that is responsible enough to break the scriptures and go into the depths of the spirit to open these things up to you, you keep living your life as a believer, facing things you do not understand. Wow. And you can never be able to explain. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. I'm introducing this today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then next Sunday we'll go even much deeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still with me here? Are we here, Papa? So understand that there are legalities to life, legalities to the universe, legalities even in the kingdom. Amen. Legalities to your faith. Wow. wow. They are the legalities of our faith. Wow. There are things that our faith demands. This faith that you have come to believe in, there is what it demands of you. Amen. There are things that can, you can never get from God unless you apply certain principles. That's so true. For example, when we talk about financial increase, it doesn't come by prayer. Wow. If you like pray from now to Jericho, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you, your finances can never increase by prayer. That's real. So when I see people praying for money, I, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Wow. Wow. Because of my understanding of spiritual legalities, when it comes to finances, the Bible says you give it and then you receive it. Amen. That's real. It's in the word. It is not by prayer. Prayer only brings the opportunity for you to give. Wow. <laughs> you didn't hear. Amen. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. When they taught you, taught you in Sunday school, prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Lies. <laughs> Lies. Help us, Papa. Amen. Prayer is not the master key. Wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is the understanding of things. Amen. Is to know how things operate. Because once you understand how things operate, you have the key to unlock the resources that you require in your life. Wow. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me, Papa? Are you still with me, people? Are we here, Papa? So understand that from the time you were born until the day you leave this world, you must pay attention to legalities. Amen. You must pay attention to legalities. I need a little bit more space on my head, guys. <laughs> You must pay attention to legalities. If you don't, you will suffer many things. Wow. That's deep. You will suffer many things. All beings operate within the confines of certain legalities. Wow. Or certain laws. That's so true, Papa. All beings. All beings. All beings. Whether Satan, <laughs> angels... They all operate within a certain confines wow. of laws that govern their operation. Are you still with me here? Are we here, Papa? This is where Satan makes his biggest profits. Wow. Because there, <laughs> there is what gives Satan advantage to the believers. Because Satan understands laws. Wow. He understands spiritual laws and he understands earthly laws. He understands universal laws. Wow. And so this is where he has an advantage over many believers. You may be more powerful than Satan, more anointed than Satan, more gifted than Satan, but where he beats you is knowledge. Wow. wow. That's deep. That's deep, Papa. Help us. Because your anointing without knowledge can never be effective. That's so real. 
Your power without knowledge would, <laughs> would even destroy you. Wow. Talk more of others. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. So Satan does not care about how anointed you are. He does not care about how gifted you are. All Satan wants is for you to lack a certain information. Wow. Hey, that's deep. That's deep. That is why any church you go to that doesn't upgrade your knowledge of the things of God and the things of the Spirit hey. is the church you went to die. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. And usually the... It is the lack of knowledge of people that brings profit to deception. Wow. That's so true, Papa. What you don't know is what <laughs> pays those who come to deceive. Wow. Because they would rather keep you in ignorance so that they can have dominance over you and take over all that should be yours. Wow. Wow. I'll find time and really teach concerning the principle of knowledge in life. Wow. Amen. Amen. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? So Satan is very knowledgeable about natural laws and spiritual laws and universal laws. And the truth is, he knows that most believers are not knowledgeable about these laws. Wow. He knows that. So he attacks believers in the area of their ignorance that's so real. because when you're not knowledgeable about the laws then he can do whatever he wants to do in that area of your life wow that's so if true. you're not knowledgeable about certain laws satan now has an opportunity to attack you in that area wow but if you had knowledge concerning the laws of that particular area you have you're facing trouble with who's switching guys If you have knowledge of these things, then guess what? Satan doesn't know how to come at you anymore. Wow. He cannot come at you because the laws are what God granted you for you to be able to find resource, resourceful answers That's right. to the problems that you're facing. Amen. So if you're going through a certain problem right now, there are laws that govern that issue. For you to be able to find a resolution to hey. that issue. Amen. Amen. So Satan will seek to blind you. Jesus. Wow. And to make you ignorant of those laws. I can't hear myself. Ignorant of those laws so that you are unable to find the answer. Wow. Because he knows he can't do anything against the laws. The laws were set there by God. Satan cannot overpower any law. Wow. That's deep. The moment you learn a law that has to do with your problem, hey. Satan can't fight you in that area. Hey, hallelujah. We have a prophet. Hallelujah. So when you say Satan is fighting me, uh -huh. Satan is not fighting you. It's your ignorance that is making him fight you. Oh, he just said so. Oh, wow, that's deep. That is deep. That is deep. I wish I had people in this place. Oh, we're here, Papa. It is your ignorance that is causing Satan to fight you. That's real. Because Satan loses his power where there is the knowledge of the principles of life. Wow. Somebody is going into business and have no understanding concerning business. And their business is not flowing, it's not functioning. And they say, Satan is fighting me. Satan is only fighting you because you lack knowledge. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. The day you learn the laws that govern business <laughs> affluence. Amen. That makes business become something. Hallelujah. That day you are delivered. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall I make you free. free. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. So what you know is what is your deliverance. Wow. That is the highest form of deliverance. Hey, that's deep. Oh, that's deep. I can cast all the demons out of you, but your ignorance will bring more than those demons back. Wow. That's real. <laughs> That's 
for real. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. That is why in Supernatural Church, you know, uh, we don't normally have a lot of deliverance sessions <laughs> because we deliver people by truth. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know, I know many of you think that where you see people getting delivered all the time, that means that's where there's power. You are deceived. You don't understand. Wow. Spiritual things are not what you think. Wow. That's deep. Oh, I'm not against deliverance. Deliverance is needed for some people. But I'm telling you that the height of all deliverance and everybody who's truly walking in the deliverance ministry, if there's such a thing anyways. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but anybody who's truly walking in that deliverance ministrations understand that the height of anybody's deliverance is the truth they have come to realize. Amen. That's so real. And so I like to go for the excellent things. Amen. And I put the truth before the people of God. And get them to be more, become more awakened to the truth. Amen. The day you awaken to the truth, Satan leaves you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are delivered from demons instantaneously. Amen. So many of you come and sit down at this atmosphere and hear the words from my mouth. You think that it's when you start shaking and manifesting, that's when the demon <laughs> left you. No. <laughs> right now as I'm teaching... Spirits that have held people bound hey. are leaving people. Hey, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One of these days we'll talk about deliverance. Amen. So you understand biblical context of deliverance. When you understand these things, you are not, you are not shaking. You know, sometimes, you know, you want to lay hands on somebody and when they start quickly, <laughs> you feel powerful. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is telling the disciples, hey, don't, don't rejoice about those things. That's real. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. So, it is not every instance of deliverance where you find people shaking, you know. Some, yeah, but not every instance. Most of the time, most of the time, most people are delivered in silence. Wow. wow. That's deep. That's most deep. of the time. I'm telling you. Sometimes you don't know what came out of you when you sneezed. Wow. Hey, oh, he just said so. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. Oh, you thought you had to roll over the floor and dirty your dress because of a small demon. That's real. Just you a see, that's, that's that, you know, <laughs> that's that, how do you call it? Um, it's a certain mindset that believers have. They must see like, Things destroyed, then they know that something has happened. Wow. It is, it is not only a, a, a lower class understanding of, of life and, and the spirit. It is also a mind of, it's a destructive mind. Wow. That's real. Where you want the devil to destroy people's clothes, destroy, dirty themselves, before you know that they are free. Wow. That's deep. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. That's why I love the man of God, Pastor Chris. <laughs> you know, sometimes he's just looking at you like this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's deep. laughs> no screaming. We want to say, out. <laughs> that's how we know that we are, we are doing deliverance sessions. Out. No. <laughs> that's real. Demons, when they understand authority. Listen, one of the beings that understand authority as are entities, demonic entities. Wow. Especially the high ones. They understand authority so much. I told you about the man of God who was sleeping. And Satan came to visit him and messed up his whole house. He woke up and said, oh, it's you. And went back to sleep. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Then he realized that the place was all messed up. He went back and said, hey, please, come back and fix it. Wow. That's deep. That's and deep. Satan came back, fixed the house, and left. <laughs> That's you, deep. You, want, you want to be doing this with the devil. <laughs> That's real. You want to be in the ring with the devil. Then you sweat. You sweat until all your clothes is soaked. Then you know that the devil has listened to you. You have a problem. That's real. 
you have a big problem. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. But we're not taking today to address that problem. That's another teaching. <laughs> Amen. Are you still with me here, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. So understand that Satan, his biggest advantage is in the area of your ignorance. Wow. In the area of your ignorance. Are you still with me, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. But all things were created to function by a set of laws. So if you can be knowledgeable to the laws that govern the things you desire, you will stop praying about a lot of things. Wow. Help us, Papa. The laws that govern the things you desire, what do you desire in your life? Is it money? Is it a, a, a good health? You know, good connections? What do you desire? Amen. What do you desire in life? Just think about it. There are laws that govern those things. Wow. The moment you come into the understanding of those laws, you are freed. Amen. You can receive the resources. Amen. You can receive it. Nothing will hold it back. Not even the universe can stand against you when you're walking on laws. Wow. When That's you deep. stand by laws, not even the universe, even God cannot stop you. Wow. You didn't hear what I said. That's deep. That's deep. Because God can't break his own laws. That's true. He can't stand against his own laws. He put them there. That's true. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says God cannot fight himself. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you're speaking to me, Papa. He can't fight himself. So whenever you have a certain desire, your interest should not be, oh, Lord, <laughs> do this, do this, do this. No, please. I'm trying to raise spiritual people here. Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever you realize you have a certain desire and, you know, you want something done, all you need to go and find out are the laws that govern that desire. Wow. That's deep. Because the moment you come into the awareness of the laws that govern that desire, that thing can never be held from you. Hey, hallelujah. It can never be held from you. Amen. Even if God says you're not going to get something and you work a, <laughs> you work a law that governs that desire, you'll get it. Wow. That's deep. God came to Hezekiah and said, I'll pack your bags. You're about to leave. Hezekiah said, I know a law. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Don't you realize my service before you? Wow. What I have done before you goes against what you are saying right now. Wow. So when you see God and says, come and let us reason together. Because God knows you have your rights. Wow. You're not Amen. here. Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to Hallelujah. myself. Hallelujah. Amen. And every judge, no matter what the judge, <laughs> what power he has, he cannot have power against laws. Wow. That's so true. God is subject to his laws. Wow. The moment you bring a strong argument based on a law, it is done. Wow. That's deep. No judge can refute the law. Because they are judges to uphold the law. You are only a judge so that the, the laws can be upheld. That's right. I feel like I'm talking That's to right. myself. Oh, we here, Papa. We here. That's the reason you are a judge, to uphold the law. Amen. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? So, understand that over 90% of your frustrations in life, <laughs> right now, they are there because of a law you are ignorant of. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Think about it. Help us, Papa. Help us. <laughs> this is what we do in Supernatural Church, to expose you to the laws Amen. of life. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you were to know the laws that govern your problems, I'm telling you, you live a stress-free life. Amen. I'm coming to explain some things here. Amen. I'm just building, building. Hallelujah. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? Listen to me, people. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. God does not answer prayers. Wow. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said so. <laughs> Are you here? Oh, we're here, Papa. 
<laughs> God answers the prayer that is according to his will. Wow. Amen. According to his laws. Amen. Because a will is a law. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. If your prayer, whatever prayer you are making, is not according to his law, God doesn't even hear it. Wow. That's deep. There is the prayer that the Lord hears. What enters his ear is what is according to his will. Wow. Oh, you want me to show you? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of you, the prayers you have been making has never reached the ear of God. Wow. Oh, that's deep. Help us, Papa. <laughs> Let me show you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We ready for the word. <laughs> Amen. Ask anything according to his will. First John chapter 5, verse 14. He Amen. does what? <laughs> oh, Jesus. First John chapter 5, the verse 14. Uh -huh. And this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. <laughs> This is the confident confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, somebody say anything. Anything. Did he say some things? No. Anything. Anything. According to his will, that's when he hears you. Wow. That's deep. So whatever is not according to his will, he doesn't even hear it. Oh, that's deep. Talk more of answering it. Wow. Are you still here, people? Oh, we're here, it's right there in your Bible. Oh, he says, this is the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. He heareth us. That means the moment when people say, oh, Father, if it be your will, it's the most foolish prayer you can ever pray. Wow. Because if you don't know his will, he's not even hearing you. Wow. So for you to go back to God and say, if it be your will, you don't know his will and you're talking to him. That's deep. How can he hear you? Wow. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Oh, that's deep. That's why the Bible says he does not hear the prayer of a sinner. Wow. That's deep. Why doesn't he hear the prayer of a sinner? Because the first prayer the sinner is supposed to make is, Lord, I repent. <laughs> Amen. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. But he says, but the Bible says, this is the confidence that I have. That if I am asking something according to his will, I know he hears me. And if he hears me, next verse. Amen. We have the petition. Kalambaya tekesha. Next verse. And if we know that he heareth us, if we know, the moment you know that God has heard you, know that you have received it. Wow. Amen. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have hey. the petitions Hallelujah. that we desired of him. Hallelujah. Amen. So all you need to do is ensure that what you are asking is according to his will, number one. Amen. Then you have to know that he has heard you. Amen. The time you figured out that he has heard you, know that it is granted. It is granted. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. It is granted. Amen. No stress about it. Amen. No stress about it. Amen. So before you go to God asking God anything, Know first, understand first that he has heard, that he's heard you. Amen. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? And when you can come to the conclusion that God has heard you, then also know that it's granted. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me, Papa? So, God does not answer prayer. He answers the prayer according to his will. Wow, that's deep. What is the will of God for prayer? Ask in my name. Wow. Hey. If you ask anything in my name, it will be given to you. Amen. Ask in my name. Ask in anoma, in character, in the personality. 
Amen. We'll decode that another day. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to you, somebody? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. So remember that the laws of God in the universe have been set to connect you to life. Amen. Every law of God in this universe have been given to connect you to life. Amen. It is not against you. It is not for you to, you know, have to do certain things and, you know, try to do certain things. No. It has been set there in place to connect you to life. Amen. The problem is man, because of his heart, because of the weakness of his flesh, and because of the pleasure of sin is opposed to laws. Wow. So there are three things that makes man opposed to laws. Number one, his heart, the content of his heart. Number two, the weakness of his flesh. Number three, the pleasures of sin. That's so true. These are the things that make man opposed to laws. Wow. Are you still with me? Oh, we're here, Papa. But understand that even angels also are subject to legalities and to the laws of God. Wow. No one is, ex is exempted. So don't think that when God is telling Moses such and such and such and such for his people to do, it is because, you know, God is just picking out men wow. to live by a certain number of laws. No. Even angels have a certain number of laws to live by. Amen. And the higher their classes, the more strict are the laws. Wow. That's deep. Are you still here? We're here. Bro. The higher the ranking of the angel, the more strict are the laws. Wow. Angelic ranks don't just happen. No. Because there are angels who have failed God at a certain time. Wow. That's so true. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Do you know that angels who slept with the daughters of men actually broke a law in the universe? Wow. Because we are not supposed to mate with another creature. Wow. That is a law in this universe. It is not only with animals, even with other beings and entities, it is not allowed wow. to crossbreed. That's deep. This is not in the plan of God for you to crossbreed. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. So we have people who are going against the ordinances of nature. And they are crossbreeding. They, <laughs> they have their judgments for crossbreeding. Wow. That's it is deep. against the laws of God in, in the universe. Are you still with me, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. So angels, they knew this law. When they broke it, they knew they would not go back. Wow. They knew it. And they knew the consequences of what they were doing. It's not like they were just doing it. No, they knew that they were going to lose their place. Wow. Are you still here, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. So angels, they understand these laws. They know and they follow them. They have to live by them for them to increase in their ranks. If they don't live by the laws that have been given to them, they can never climb higher, higher in the things of the spirit. Wow. That's and that's deep. the same for you. Wow. If you don't learn to live by certain laws, you can never grow in the things of the spirit. Wow. If you just want to live your life haphazard and live and do whatever you like, okay, you are free. You are free will. Do whatever you like. But as far as getting higher in the things of God, you will never get there. Wow. God will never come and say, oh, please stop doing this because I need to take you somewhere. No, he wouldn't do it. Wow. It is for you to understand the things God has set in the universe. And determine of your own desire. Amen. That's, that's the key. Amen. Of your own volition and of, of your own desire that you're going to live a certain life. Amen. And walk a certain way before God. Amen. If it's not coming from your desire, if it's coming because God told you to, you have not reached, you have not done anything. Wow. That's deep. Some of you only do the right things because God said, Wow. God wants you to do the right things because you desire it. Amen. That's where maturity begins. Amen. Hallelujah. If God didn't say and it was still wrong to do, would you do it? That's so real. Are you still here, somebody? Are we here, Papa? A lot of us, we live because God said. God said. And that's fine. It's beautiful. 
But God wants you to come to a place where you can begin to understand how life is, how it has been set up to live. Amen. And so you begin to do certain things, not based on, oh, I saw my brother not doing this, so I will not do it too. That's right. I saw my parents not living like this, so I will not live like that too. No, do you desire it? That's right. Amen. Do you desire to live that way? Amen. That's what makes you mature in the things of the spirit. Amen. When you see people living a certain way and doing, a, doing certain things in life, the reason I'm not interested is not because of the consequences that may come. It's because I don't desire to live that way. Wow. Are you still here? Are we here, Papa? Because sometimes if we don't see consequences, we will desire the wrong thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's deep unless there is consequences we'll keep wanting it <laughs> but you must grow to a point where you have your desires your desires before the Lord amen that's why David was so chosen among men Wow! people that were chosen among men were people who in their days they went against the odds of many while many were going in one direction they decided to go in another direction. Amen. Usually, the path that you see many people treading is usually the path you shouldn't go to. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because it's easy to do the wrong thing. It's easier to follow the crowd. It is much difficult to be alone. That's true. That's so true. Much difficult to walk alone. That's real. Much difficult to do the right things when your whole, your whole clique is doing the wrong thing. Much difficult. Amen. That's real. Because you get enticed by the, you know, the quick gains that they have. And the, how, you know, easy things may work out for them. And you think, ah, this life is beautiful. It's beautiful in the outside, but in the inside it's not. Believe me. Wow. That's so true. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you're speaking to me, Papa. These are the things, if you don't come to understanding of them in life, you will keep cheating yourself in destiny, not realizing that what people are doing to get the things that they are getting. Wow. That's deep. Is what is destroying their future. Wow. Are you still with me, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. So angels, they are also subject to these laws. Remember that when Moses died, the Bible says that Archangel Michael wrestled over the body of Moses. It's in the word. And it was a fight. Wow. For <laughs> a long time. Amen. It was a battle. For about two days, there was a fight over the body of Moses. Wow. And in that fight, imagine Archangel Michael could not defeat Satan. Why? Wow. Let me bring you higher tonight. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you still here? Oh, we're here, Papa. The Bible says Archangel Michael could not bring a railing accusation against Satan. Wow. The reason is because you are not permitted, according to the laws of the universe, you are not permitted to speak against dignitaries. Wow. Let me take you into some things now. Amen. You are not permitted to speak against dignitaries. And Michael knew it. And so in the whole fight, he could not speak against Satan. Wow. Because at this point, Satan was operating with a different rank. Wow. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me, The book Papa. of Jude, the chapter number one. Let's read from the verse eight. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Jude, chapter one, the verse eight. Uh -huh. The Bible says, likewise, also these filthy dreamers uh -huh. defile the flesh, mm -hmm. despise dominion, mm -hmm. and speak evil of dignities. Uh -huh. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. 
but said, the Lord rebuke thee. <laughs> Read the verse 8 again one more time. Amen. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers uh -huh. defile the flesh. Defile the flesh. Despise dominion. Despise dominion. And speak evil of dignities. And speak evil of dignities. Amen. Wait a minute. <laughs> And it is for this reason the Bible tells us that Michael could not bring a railing accusation against Satan. Wait. Wow. Wait a minute. We are speaking about an evil entity. And you are telling me Michael as an archangel, an arch being, cannot say something against Satan. Wow. wow. That's deep. That's deep. I'm about to expose to you a law in the universe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Michael. Who is the arch being of all angelic order? Cannot say some against a fallen being. Why? Wow. An evil one for that matter. Michael cannot speak against Satan. Wow. That's deep. It's in the word. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? This is the same Michael that <laughs> threw Satan out of heaven. Wow. That's true. The same Michael cannot speak against Satan. Wow. Because of legalities. Wow. It was Michael who led the charge to throw all the princes of darkness who rebelled against God out from the heavens. One third of the angels was thrown out of the heavens by Michael's, Michael and his angels. It's in a word. Only Michael and his angels, not other angels, the Michaels. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. It didn't take all the other angels. No, I'm talking about Michael and his men, the Michaels. Amen. If you have been to <laughs> Mystics Conference 1, you understand. <laughs> Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. So understand, one being cannot now bring Satan <laughs> a railing accusation. He cannot speak against Satan. Why? There is a law in this universe. Wow. And this universe also applies to Satan. Wow. That law in this universe also applies to Satan. That's deep. Because Satan at this point was a prince. Wow. That's he didn't just become Satan. He was also a prince among many. Wow. Why? Because he, Shana Bakoya. Hallelujah. He defeated man at the garden and took his rank from him. Wow. And so at this point, Satan is operating with human rights. Wow. Human ranks. And so an angel cannot come and speak against him. Wow. That's deep. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. Oh, that's deep. But had to say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> the same Michael that threw him out. Wow. Legalities. That's the. Are you still here, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, he's speaking to me. Legalities. Same Michael. He rather used the Lord to rebuke Satan. That is when Satan let the body of Michael go, um, of Moses go. Wow. It would have never happened until Michael understood legalities. He knew that at this point, even as powerful as I am, I can't do nothing. Wow. I have to use a certain legal order. The Lord rebukes you. That's deep. Before Satan could let the body of Moses go. That's deep. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me. You need to understand these things. You cannot speak against dignities. Wow. It is a law in this universe. The moment you start speaking against dignities, the universe begins to work against you. Wow. I feel like I'm talking That's to deep. myself. That's deep. We're here, Papa. Can I show you something here? Oh, we're here, Papa. What God has placed in his universe is such that it doesn't matter who you think you are. You do not speak against dignities. Wow. 
I want to open up some things for your life. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you still with me, somebody? We're here, Papa. So, you have to understand that whatever brought them to that position is what will fight you if you speak against them. Wow. That's deep. Somebody who has become a dignity, whether here or in the realm of the spirit, they were not just brought there by human empowerment. Wow. Whatever brought them to that position is what is going to fight you when you speak against them. Wow. wow. That's deep. <laughs> no, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> Are you still here? Oh, we're here. Your problem is that you think people gain authority and gain dignities just because it just happened. No. The Bible says every rule is established by God. It's in the word. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. Even the president you don't like was established by God. Wow. That's in the word. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. God allow what you allowed. Wow. <laughs> and so if it's there, there is a way you have to address dignities. Wow. That's deep. You can't just come and talk to dignities anyhow. You can't speak to them anyhow. Wow. The universe will judge you for it. Wow. That's deep. Are you still with me here? Oh, we're here, Papa. Speaking against authorities will rather work against you. Wow. This is why when you read the book of Acts, something interesting happened to Paul. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Paul, the man of God. Acts chapter 23. I want you to see something here. I'm taking you somewhere today. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 23, from verse 1, he says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. <laughs> this is Paul, the anointed Paul. <laughs> Watch what is about to happen to him. And the high priest Ananias commanded, that, commanded them that stood by him to smite him. On the mouth. Wow. The high priest. <laughs> the high priest. It's in the word. What did he say? <laughs> I have lived in all good conscience before men. Wow. wow. The high priest says, slap him. <laughs> Give him one. <laughs> <laughs> notice what Paul does after this. Then notice what happens. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Wow. Wow. Paul is using now his apostolic office to speak against the high priest and say, God shall smite thee. Then those who were by Paul, <laughs> they said, shh, you are reviling thou God's high priest. Wow. Do you understand what you're doing? See how Paul became so quiet. <laughs> Watch the next verse. Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren. I didn't know he was a high priest. <laughs> It says, for it is written, thou shall not speak, again, speak, evil, speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Wow. It's in a word. This is the problem with many Christians. You don't know how to keep quiet. That's so true. Before princes, before authorities, you think that because they are wrong, you have a right to say something. That's your problem. Wow. Amen. That's deep, Papa. Hallelujah. Paul became afraid. That he had said some against the high priest of God. Yet what he said was correct. And he was being judged wrongly by the law. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. And the people who knew spiritual things, they cautioned Paul. Hey, it's God's high priest you're talking to. That's Paul says, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Paul the apostle. <laughs> That's deep. 
Because according to the laws of this universe, you don't speak against dignities. Wow. They didn't come to that position by their own volition. That's deep. Are you still with me? Are we here, Papa? Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me, Papa? These are the things, if you don't learn whilst you're young, you will make so many mistakes and have so many setbacks in your life. Wow. Not understanding how you spoke to your teacher is what is working against you today. Wow. Hey, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. That teacher that, you know, had, you know, <laughs> a crooked shoe. And you thought because of his condition, you can say something. Is what is working against your life today. Wow. That's deep. Because in the laws of the universe, you don't speak against dignities. Wow. Anyone that has been placed above you in any way, shape, or form, you don't speak against them. Wow. That's deep. Are you listening to me, somebody? Over here, here Papa. When you understand these things, you become afraid. So David true. said to the man who claimed to have killed sources, how were you not afraid? How were you not afraid? Because there is a fear you should have when you are dealing with certain people. Wow. Didn't hear. That's real. Oh. That's real. This was Saul who God rejected. Yet David is telling the man, how were you not afraid to raise your hand against the Lord's anointed? How were you not afraid? Wow. Because there is a fear that comes with dealing with dignities. Amen. That's real. That's why David himself, even though he knew he was the next of king, could not kill Saul when he had the opportunity. That's right. The day he only tempered to cut his clothes, God punished him for it. Wow. wow. That's deep. And then you think you can just stand because somebody did something wrong, you can just say whatever. That's real. You don't understand the laws of the universe. Help us, Papa. Oh, I'm so angry, I'm so angry. And you speak anyhow. It's what is working against you. Wow. Are you still here, somebody? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? You can't speak against the president of your country. Wow. You can't. That's deep. It doesn't matter what kind of laws he's passing. Even if they're against your faith and belief. Wow. You can't mock him. You can't say <laughs> he's demented for making that law. <laughs> you can't say this man has no sense. Wow. It's revelation. When you talk like that, you are speaking against dignities. Wow. And that will work against you in that country. Wow. Believe what I'm telling you. That's deep. The economy that he's leading will never favor you. Wow. That's deep. Are you still here, somebody? Oh, we're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me? We're just soaking it in, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> when you see dignities doing something wrong, what the Bible instructs us to do is to pray for them. You know, one of the, uh, the instructions that God, uh, Paul gave his son, Timothy, is never to speak against elders. That's so true. He says, you don't even correct your elders. Wow. You know children that will just stand before their parents. Now you are this, you are that. You are. I used to be that hot-headed when I was a kid. When I grew, I understood. The principles of life work against you even when somebody is wrong. Wow. <laughs> because deep. you are not in the position to correct an elder. That's real. Help us. Help us. That's real. You don't have the place. You were not given the ranks. That's right. It is not with children to correct their parents. That's right. Understand it. That's real. Are you listening to me, somebody? Oh, we here, Papa. If you like, try it. The struggles you have in life, you will be so surprised. Yet, they were wrong. That's so true. I'm not trying to excuse what they did. I'm just telling you, it is not your place. That's real. Oh, you want to go to a church where they just teach you <laughs> small, small things. Eh? Oh, we love this, Papa. Thank you. These are the things of life, the laws of life. Amen. That if you don't understand, life will work against you continuously. That's so true. Because you are bragging to know 
when you still have little knowledge. Wow. And I'm going to explain to you why in a moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you still here, somebody? Are we here, Papa? Notice that the Bible did not say that <laughs> Archangel Michael spoke against Satan. The Bible says he only could not... <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Go back to the scripture. I want to show you something. Amen. Jude, verse 9. Watch this. Kalabasaya. The book of Jude, chapter 1, the verse 9. Uh -huh. The Bible says, Yet, Yet Michael... Michael the archangel, uh -huh. when contending with the devil, uh -huh. he disputed about the body of Moses. Uh -huh. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation. It was not speaking against Satan. Satan, you are evil. Satan, you are this. He cannot even accuse Satan. Wow. Satan, you are trying to take Moses, but he can't accuse him. Wow. Listen, it, it was not speaking against Satan. It was an accusation. Wow. He could not even bring a railing accusation. That's deep. That's deep. He could not even accuse Satan. Because he's not in the ranks. Wow. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Does not bring against him a railing accusation. Accusation. Whether it is false or true, you cannot accuse. Wow. Dignities. That's real. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. What brought them to that level, you must understand, is much stronger than any accusation you can bring against them. Wow. Am I talking to you? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. I think it's getting quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're here, Papa. We're we learn a lot. <laughs> you know, the reason is because sometimes we say things that we think is just normal. To say, you know, but those things are the things that deprives you of your inheritance in life. Wow. Oh, it's normal to just correct, you know, it's correction. They are not your children. Correct your children. Speak with wisdom to your elders. You do not correct them. Amen. You do not correct even your husband. You speak with wisdom to him because Amen. he's your head. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. My mother would always say to me, first of all, you must know when your father is happy and when he's not happy. Before you want to go and bring certain things to him. <laughs> know when he's in a good mood. Wisdom. Just go, oh, daddy did this. I don't like this thing daddy's doing. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. You don't understand what you're doing. It's later on you begin to see the events of your life, the turn of events in your life. Then the Lord will begin to trace you back to those moments. Wow. That's deep. And, you know, every time you go before God and ask him, Lord, why is my life like this? Certain things will start popping up in your head. You don't know God is showing you wow. where you made the mistakes. That's deep. Oh, that's deep. That's deep, Papa. Amen. I remember when God was tracing me back to the times I was standing up to my father because I needed to correct him. Wow. So I thought I knew. Somebody who raised me. <laughs> I was bringing good arguments to me. <laughs> but even though he may have been wrong with the things he was doing, I was in no position. Wow. To correct my father. In no position. And this thing worked against me for over seven years. Wow. wow. That's deep. And I began to go before the Lord and ask him why. Why is this happening in my life? Why is that happening in my life? He took me back there. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> 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 when someone said, how did you solve it? <laughs> Amen. The first thing the Lord asked me to do is begin to buy his heart. So wow. I would buy him things and bring to him to soften his heart. Because there was one season me and my father did not have any connection. My wow. biological father. Wow. There was no connection between me and him. 
when he comes, I'm quiet. <laughs> I don't say anything. So I was buying him things, thinking that I'm releasing his heart for me. My dad is my father. I'm his child. There's no way he can ever hold me in his heart. I didn't know I was releasing myself. Wow. wow. That's deep. Because I had kept him at a certain place in my heart. And I thought that all the things that he did, why could he not see? He's supposed to be this and that and this and that. That's deep. And then I went to God and said, Lord, why is my life like this? He said, your father. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he began to say to me, do this, do that. So there was a season every month I would give him money. Every month, even if it's just $100, I would put it in his hands. Wow. That is how the relationship became amended. Wow. Are you still here, somebody? We're here, Papa. You want to fight dignitaries and win? It will never happen. That's deep. It will never happen. Amen. We grow up in a culture where we think that the mistakes of our parents has given us a place to judge them. Not realizing real. that the reason they are that way is because they didn't also know. Yes. That's real. Nobody taught them. That's real. That's real. Amen. We have a prophet. Hallelujah. If they knew better, they would do better. And so you want to come and judge them for the wrong that they were doing. You don't know even the wrong you are doing is because there are things you don't know. Wow. And so your children will stand against you one day as well. Wow. Because there are some errors you are making now. That are not sufficient to what your children would like. And so one day when they raise up to stand against you, remember yourself before your parents. That's real. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. You don't speak against dignities. That law in this is it's a chief law in the universe. Amen. Doesn't matter how you feel about them. Leave them up to God. And those God has put ahead of them or above them. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me? You know, one day, <laughs> my uncles came to the house and they were having a meeting with my father. They would always come and have a meeting. It was at that time my father was not so well to do. And one day, we're just in the living room. I think at that time, my dad had. Four, there were four children in the house. And we had two bedrooms, one living room. And so the room of my parents was, you know, close to the, the living room. And my father was living in his father's house, not in his own house at that time. Because, you know, we were really struggling. This was way back in Africa. Then... Something interesting happened. During that meeting, they always have monthly meetings. And then something happened. That meeting was so strange. Everybody was talking harshly. All his elder brothers were talking harshly at him. To a point, I was just sitting by the side. To a point, one of my uncles just gave my father a dirty slap. Wow. Hey, I was wow. boiling. <laughs> I was furious. And my dad just, you know, was just so calm. Hey, in my heart, like, that was me. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's real. He was so calm. I was shocked. I wanted to do something. I went to my mother. I said, ah, did, you, did you see what happened? My mother calmed me down. She said, don't ever in your life interfere with your father's brothers, you know, when they are doing their meetings. But that day, the thing I wanted to do to that, my uncle. <laughs> Only God saved me. My mother was the one God used. I was planning to do something so evil to him. Wow. I was like, a grown man with children. You slapped him in front of his children. And his wife is sitting right there. I was shocked. My dad didn't say anything. Listen. The story of our lives now has changed. Amen. Amen. Because my father has become one of the blessed people among all his brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And if they need to do something, they will call him, hey, John, <laughs> what can we do with this? They will call him, he will give them. Wow. Send money for this, send money for that. Amen. But what brought my father to that place was the heart. Wow. He did not respond. Every time, even if that his brother that slapped him had an issue, he would be the first to call, the first to be there. Wow. And I thank God for my mother also. She never put her mouth in any kind of argument my, my father was having with his brothers. And before we left and came to this country, one of his elder brothers called my mom to the side and said, out of all my brothers and the wives they married, you are the best of all of them. Wow. Amen. Amen. And began to recount stories upon stories to my mother how when you know my father traveled she never went to any of them to ask them for money she worked hard to take care of the kids and then also reminded her of that time when they were together and having problems she never stepped in to correct any of them or to even say oh that's my husband she says you are a good woman wow you didn't bring any trouble between your your husband and his brothers amen and his family Wisdom in life will teach you just because you are right doesn't mean that things will work in your favor. Wow, that's real. Wisdom in this life. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a prophet. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. You can be very right with everything, but you are failing in every instance in life. Wow. And you think... That is because Satan is against you. It's because you are breaking the law in this universe. Wow. By speaking against dignities. That boss, that is your boss right there, is a dignity. Wow. If you like, go behind him and be talking with, about him with all of your co-workers. You will see what will happen to you in no time. Wow. That's deep. You don't speak against dignities. I can stay on this law for, <laughs> for the whole week just talking to you about speaking against dignities. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Are you still here, somebody? We're here, Papa. This wisdom is with the aged. It's not until you have grown to a certain place then you begin to understand this is how life has been treating me. And it's because of this. Young people, they don't, they don't understand these things. Because they're about justice and fairness. Justice and fairness. <laughs> you know, when, when you tell your child, um, you do this, and then you tell the other one, don't do this. The same thing. You say, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. They don't know it's because you, have, you know their character and you are managing what will happen to them. Wow. They think it's just about, oh, you allowed this one to do something and you didn't allow that one to do something. That's but you real. know what this one, with the kind of propensity they have, this is what they can do. That's real. So you don't do this. You come back at 10. You come back at 7 p.m. <laughs> because you, after 7 p.m., your life. <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> Are you still here? We're here, Papa. But that's not fair. That's not fair. They don't know. You have a higher understanding. You're trying to save them. Because of their tendencies. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Oh, we're here, Papa. This is so good. Amen. Life is more complex than... You see, some people think that life is black and white. It's more complex than that. It's right or wrong? No. And sometimes when somebody asks me a question, they say, just say yes. I said, no, I can't say it. Just, I, just don't give me two answers. Yes or no? It's not about yes or no. <laughs> That's real. There are certain things that is not about yes or no. That's real. It needs a full explanation for, for you to grab, grasp the concept Amen. we are dealing with here. If I give you a yes or no answer, I'm destroying you. Wow. That is why many times when they came to Jesus asking for an answer, Jesus said, I'll also ask you a question. Wow. That's deep. That's so true. Because it's not just about giving you an answer. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Because there is something Jesus wants to deal with internally. Wow.
And sometimes when you tell wives, oh, don't do this. <laughs> like, ah, explain, explain. <laughs> tell me why. <laughs> because you don't understand the wisdom of God in the man usually may not even require explanation. It is just something God has placed in his head that this is what we should do. Yeah, that's real. He doesn't even understand how God is using that to bring up his family. Wow. But it's in the days to come that if you are a wise woman and you follow, you begin to see the glory of that decision. Wow. Amen. But sometimes you don't realize when you start asking for explanation, he will give you an answer that will not even measure up to what you are looking for. And then you will destroy the idea God placed in his head. That's real. That's deep. I feel like I'm talking to myself. That's deep. That's deep. I'm dealing with issues of life here. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. One thing you must allow a man to do is to grow and become mature. If you are the one trying to grow him, he will never grow. That's real. That's real. If you are the one trying to make him understand life, he will never understand. Believe what I'm telling you. Somebody say amen. Amen. All the women say amen. <laughs> Don't. I, I hope I'm not losing you. <laughs> it's my job as a pastor to correct the things that are going. I'm not just teaching you. I know what is happening in your homes. That's real. Oh, you think I'm just a prophet to come and prophesy. <laughs> when I'm praying, God is showing me what to talk about. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you still here? We're here. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. But understand, life is more complex than right or wrong, yes or no, please. If that's how you're going through life, believe me, you will always hit roadblocks continuously. Seek understanding. Amen. Are you here, somebody? Are we here, Papa? Seek understanding. Want to understand what is the essence of the no? What is the essence of the yes? Seek understanding. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? But this life is full of legalities. And when you grow in the things of the Spirit, you begin to realize that there is more than right or wrong. You know, Miriam was very right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Miriam, the elder sister of Moses. Somebody say elder. <laughs> Elders. I'm about to take you to another place. <laughs> Amen. The elder sister of Moses rebuked Moses for something wrong Moses did. God left Moses and came to Miriam. Are you crazy? <laughs> Is something wrong with you? And gave Miriam leprosy. It's in the word. Because whoever God has called... It doesn't matter if you're older than them. They are dignities. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Hey, some family members don't know that that last born that has been called by God, if you speak anyhow, you will start losing your business. Wow. You will start losing your contracts. You don't even know. Wow. They are not even making any prayer. God is fighting you for speaking against the one he called. Wow. Wow. That's deep. You don't play with such things. And Moses had to be the one to come and pray for Miriam, the younger brother. Wow. Because the anointing of God upon a man's calling makes him a dignity before men. Wow. That's deep. If somebody wonder, why do people who are older than us come and, you know, kneel before us? Why do we allow that? I'm not allowing anything. Did I tell you to come and kneel? <laughs> That's real. Me, I don't even care about such things. Whether you knew or you don't need, it doesn't matter to me because that's not how I look at humility. I judge humility differently. So whether you knew or you don't need is fine. But if you kneel rightly from your heart and it's out of your heart, that's fine. Amen. Are you still with me? We're here, Papa. Oh, yeah. You can have somebody kneel before you every day and they're the ones killing you in the back. <laughs> don't play. That's real. Life. So understand these things. So I knew. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Long time ago, that the place of people God has called, it's not to be messed with. Amen. It's a law in the universe. 
David says, how were you not afraid? And you see, with that righteous indignation, David killed the man. He says, your judgment is death. Wow. Because you came to claim that Saul told me because he was about to die that I should just finish him <laughs> so that the, his enemies will not come and kill him. David says, you were not afraid. You know, in that passage, two times, David asked him, where are you from? Wow. It was not about his location, where his parents are from. No. David was wondering, what kind of a personality are you? Wow. That you don't understand, that you don't treat dignities like that. Wow. That's deep. Instead of you to try to rescue your, your king, you decided to kill him. Wow. That's deep. And you're coming to brag because you know I'm the next of king. Look at how excellent David's heart was. He knew that David was the next. So he thought if he would come and say to David, I, I killed Saul. Now is your turn. Then David will be happy. David was not happy. Wow. Surprise, surprise. Wow. That's deep. David took the sword and smite the guy. You see, when you're happy, that something happened to somebody that you hated. <laughs> we know your true character. That's real. Somebody, you had an argument with them, and then, you know, something bad happened to them. The next me say, ah, now you will understand. You don't talk to me like that. <laughs> you see, God has shown you. No, that's not, your, that's not your place. Even if that may have happened because of that, it is not your place. That's real. You know, there are times where I know certain things have happened to certain people because of how they treated me. But I will never say, oh, now you see. I'll start praying for them. Amen. Lord, rescue them. Lord, bring them out of this. Amen. That was the response of Moses. Moses didn't stand before and say, elder sister, and say, you see, you don't talk. Me and God are like this. <laughs> you don't talk to me like that. No. Are you still here? We're here. Am I talking to you here? Are you speaking to me, Papa? So understand this. It is not about age. It is not about how young or how old. If somebody is anointed, you respect the anointing on their lives. Amen. You don't speak against dignities. If you have a problem with what they're doing, come with wisdom. Amen. Come with wisdom. If you cannot convince them with the wisdom of God that you have, Go to somebody that is higher than them. Explain the situation. Not with pride. Not to show them out. But so that they can come into uh, the correction. With the way they're supposed to come into it. So if I see something going wrong. You know with my mother's life. Or with you know. Uh, um, my mother's life. I'm not going to go and talk to my mother. First I will come with wisdom. I think this should be done this way. Maybe we can. Don't you think, don't you think, you know, like questions, you know. There's a way you talk about it. And then if they are not able to grasp it, you go to the father. Daddy, I've tried to talk to mom about this and, you know, but I don't know. Maybe you can say something. If daddy doesn't succeed, leave mama to God. Leave her to God. Amen. Leave her alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Just deal with that issue in your life. It's just your, it's your lot. Carry it. Carry your cross and walk with it. Amen. <laughs> Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Because there are such things in life. It's your cross. Just carry it. Just deal with it. Don't think that everything has to have a sudden resolution. Sometimes it is happening that way for you also to be trained. Amen. 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 Some things may be happening. You don't even know God's purposes in their behavior. Wow. You think it's against you, but it's not against the Lord. That's deep. Imagine Samson's mother is saying, why are you going to the wives of the Philistines? It's against our rule. <laughs> the Bible says their parents knew not that this was of the Lord and God sought an occasion against the Philistines. Yeah. Imagine. Wow. So what you think is wrong may not be wrong to God. That's, That's your problem. Amen. 
When you have this understanding, you are very careful as to how you tread in life. Amen. It is not because, hey, we must expose it. <laughs> we must make sure everybody knows. If you like, go and expose. How many people have they exposed and has it destroyed them? No, think about all the people you have tried to expose in life. That's real. <laughs> Did it stop them? <laughs> Did it change anything in their <laughs> lives? Even if you try to expose Satan, Satan will keep being Satan. <laughs> Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Because there's no such ministry as exposure. That's real. That's why all the critics are broke. All the journalists yeah, don't have money. <laughs> oh, that's real, Papa. That's real. <laughs> because there's no such provision in life as exposing. That's real. The things I know about people, but I keep my mouth shut because I will gain nothing from doing it. That's real. Are you still with me, somebody? We're here, Papa. I'm not saying they are not wrong. I'm just telling you, your part to play, God says pray. If you can say something, say it in wisdom. If you have said something in wisdom and it doesn't work, go to somebody higher than them. If you've gone to somebody higher than them and nothing is working, it's your lot. Carry it. Wow. Amen. Are you listening to me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? This wisdom I'm giving you will save you years of delays. Amen. Believe what I'm telling you. Amen. Thank you, Prophet. Thank you, Papa. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When it comes to the laws of creation, you can't ignore them. You can't. So say, but I've been saved by grace. <laughs> <laughs> Admonished by the blood. Nothing can work against me. Look at you. That's real. You don't know the reason for the blood. And you continue in your ignorance, and then you begin to experience certain things in life, and you begin to blame the devil. The devil had no, he only, you are only fighting the devil because you were ignorant. Wow. That's deep. The Bible says, even Satan will have to use your own lust, your own, <laughs> Satan does not come to just tempt you. You gave him the opportunity. Wow. He saw a loophole. He saw something. Wow. Am I speaking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. He understands it. Glory to God. Glory. We don't break spiritual ranks. We don't break spiritual order. We don't do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Satan understands the laws that govern these things in life. And he will enforce, listen to me, blindness, darkness, or ignorance, or rebellion to the knowledge of the laws of creation that will bring you deliverance for your problem. Wow. That's deep. He will enforce blindness, spiritual blindness. You're unable to see it. No matter what anybody says, you, you can't still, you can't see. Wow. You can't see it. Ignorance, you will lack the information about it. There will never be an opportunity for you to hear that information. Wow. Or rebellion to that knowledge. Where you will start rebel every time somebody speaks about it, it will raise up a certain indignation inside of you. Wow. And you become rebellious to that knowledge, which is the most dangerous one. That's deep. It is okay to be ignorant because you can find knowledge. It is okay to not know because nobody told you. It is not okay to be rebellious. That's where the Bible says you have gone into witchcraft. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Because when you become rebellious toward knowledge, God cannot help you. Wow. <laughs> Even Jesus cannot save you. Wow. That's why salvation is for those who receive it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you don't receive salvation, I mean, <laughs> what can God do? He's brought it to you and you are refusing to take it. What can he do? That's why rebellion. Rebellion is as the scene of witchcraft. Wow. What you know and you refuse to, and you, you refuse to follow. And you fight against. 
Yet, that knowledge was sent for your deliverance. Wow. Amen. That information was given for your deliverance. You see how the devil does this. He causes rebellion to well up in you. Because that's the, that's the most destructive way to live your life is in rebellion. Wow. That's so true. When you cannot listen to counsel, you can't listen to anybody talking to you. It's the most destructive way to live your life. Wow. Am I talking to you here? Oh, he's speaking to me, Papa. And he knows because that is the area of your deliverance. Wow. Watch what is happening here with Naaman. The Bible says, Naaman had leprosy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And he had gone to so many places and he was not cured. The day he was told where his deliverance was and he was given an instruction. Go to Jordan, dirty Jordan. Dip yourself in there seven times. That's the day his rebellion rose. Wow. It's in the word. This guy has been traveling everywhere, everywhere to find healing. Would even pay. Nothing will happen. Now they only give him one instruction. Go and dump yourself in dirty Jordan. He says, ah, you didn't see all the beautiful rivers in these places, and you sent me, me, Naaman, me, Naaman, to Dirty Jordan. This is where you begin to realize that your problem only came <laughs> to show you the area you need to grow. Amen. That's real. That is so real. This is so good, Papa. It was his pride that God needed to solve, not leprosy. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. Leprosy was a byproduct. But he thought too highly of himself. That is why when he came to the man of God, he didn't even see his face. I don't care if you're a captain of whatever army. General of where? I don't care. I will not see you. Go to Dirty Jordan. Wow. A lot of the issues you are facing in your life, it is because God is trying to deal with a certain thing inside. That's so true, Papa. That's so true. I feel like I'm talking to just myself. Oh, you're speaking to me, Papa. Oh, that's so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't like it. And Satan reinforced his pride in the moment of his deliverance. This was the thing that was going to set you free. Yet you rejected it because of pride, because of rebellion. One man of God says that <laughs> the demon of rebellion is always most agitated in the presence of his deliverer. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. Very true. That's deep. When a demon stands before the deliverer <laughs> of the person, that's when he becomes most agitated. Wow. Once you find out there is something inside of you that is not liking what is coming here, not because you are sensitive to the spirit, but because it is touching a part of you, you are refusing to change. Wow. Know that that person has been sent to deliver you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. Because if what they are telling you is only to improve your life, why are you angry? That's real. If it's just to make you better, why are you agitated? Why are you? Why are you? <laughs> Am I talking to you? Oh, you're speaking to me, Papa. But it happens like that in your moment of deliverance. Wow. When the deliverance should come to you, that is when certain things about you will be exposed. Wow. This is how people have lost their moments in life. The moments of rescue, the moments of blessing, they begin to act out of character. 
they begin to act out of anger, begin to be emotional. Wow. When God was using that moment for your deliverance. Wow. And you missed it. That's deep. I'm always careful in the moments where things are tough and critical. I'm always careful. I pay extra, extra, extra attention in that moment. Because I will not miss what God has for me in that time. Amen. I have, listen, I've made too many mistakes in my life. Too many of them. Gone through too many things in my life. I'm extra, extra attentive. When things feel the most difficult, that's when I am at the calmest. You don't even find me speaking much. Because I know the slight thing I do here, I can lose. Wow. That's so true. That's why there is such a thing in the word of God as being circumspect. Circumspect. That means you are watching with all, it's like everything in your body has eyes. Wow. That's deep. You are watching intently. Amen. Everything you are taking into consideration. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. In moments like that, I don't make any decisions. <laughs> there are times where things are happening and happening. I'm just looking, seeing, just watching, 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 watching. It's Amen. after a whole month has passed, then you see me make my decision. Amen. Because that sense of seriousness is not about what is happening. It's about, hey, what I must do to get into that level God is trying to bring me into. Amen. What I must do. Amen. Are you still here? Are we here, Papa? <laughs> it's deep. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many people are praying for things right now. You are asking God for a lot of things and believing God for so many things. You want God to do so many things for you. Right now. But you must understand that there are legalities within the concept of everything you're trying to get at this moment. There are legalities. Are we still together? We're here, Papa. There are legalities. There's a reason why people suffer for a long time. Usually, I used to go and ask God questions. And one of the times I would ask him, I say, Lord, why do people suffer for a long time? Is it your will for somebody to go through something over and over and over again for so long? And the Lord began to state reasons to me why people would suffer for a long time. Wow. That's deep. Why people would suffer for a long time. And then number one reason is because of pride. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Write it down somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's the. When you feel like you've been suffering for too long, your number one problem is pride. Wow. Because the solution has come to you in many ways and in different forms. But you were too high-minded. You thought too much of yourself. Wow. Naaman thought too much of himself to find solution in dirty Jordan. That's deep. And it was his servant that has to say to him, that had to say to him, hey, don't you realize if he told you something bigger than this, you would have gone to do it. That's real. He says all he said was go to Jordan and dump yourself there seven times. In life, have somebody by you that can speak to you and call you to attention. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me? If you fail to listen to anyone, you must have somebody that you listen to. Amen. That's why I tell every woman that wants to get married, the man you're going to marry, make sure he has somebody that he can hear, that he can listen. If he say, hey, Timothy, sit down, the man will just sit down like this. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous thing is to be married to a man who has nobody he listens to. SD. Pastor Elena knows. 
The moment she said, I'm calling your mother. <laughs> I start panicking. <laughs> oh, I'm calling your father in the law. I'm like, please, let's resolve this. <laughs> it's between us. <laughs> let's not go far. <laughs> That's deep. Are you still there? We're here. There must be one person in your life that God placed in your life to help you to be delivered from your pride. Amen. That's deep. If nobody can deliver you from your pride, no, listen, even God cannot save you. Wow. These are real things. Amen. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me, Papa? But watch this. The Bible says, Dirty Jordan. Why Dirty Jordan? Why Dirty Jordan? Why Dirty Jordan? Because in the mystery of this universe, in the mystery of this universe, how God so has put it, any disease that is known as an unclean disease, can be cleansed by something unclean. Wow. That's deep. Hey, that's deep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's deep. Oh, I wish I could talk to you about more. Oh, stuff. that's deep. <laughs> we want to know, Papa. That is mystery right there. Mystery. You have an unclean disease. You would think that it would be clean water that will heal the leprosy. It is dirty water that can actually bring more leprosy. I feel like I'm talking wow. to myself. Oh, we're here, Papa. But it is a mystery in this universe that many people don't know. That's real. I wish I can talk to you about your very urine. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's deep. Your urine. Oh, that's deep. Oh, he just said so. <laughs> oh, that's deep. That's deep. We fight things we don't understand. Wow. But it is the wisdom of God. Wow. It is the wisdom of God. With what? <laughs> even cow dunk. What it can do for you. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> you, will, deep. you will wonder. That's deep. How God has initiated purpose in everything. Wow. In everything. That's deep. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me? But because of pride, pride becomes the extension of our problem. That's real. That's real. Are you still with me, somebody? Oh, we here, Papa. This word hitting to the soul, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So you see, the solution to your problem is not what God is after. He wanted to use your problem to kill the pride. Wow. Oh, that's deep. To kill that thing in you. That's deep. That is refusing to change. And it's refusing to be transformed by the word. Wow. When you come to church every day, you sit down and listen to the word of God, the word of God. And you don't change. A problem will be given to change you. Wow. wow. That's deep. That's deep. If you are not transformed by the word, you will be transformed by the conditions of life you face. Wow. That's so real. Are we together? Oh, we're here, Papa. God wants to kill jealousy in you. <laughs> he will make the person you are jealous of be the, bless, the person that will bless you and change your life. Wow. The more you continue to be jealous of the person, the further <laughs> you will find yourself struggling. Wow. This God... He's unique in his wisdom. Amen. Amen. Where you think, <laughs> ah, why is God always blessing this guy? He's blessing that guy for you. Wow. 
That's deep. Imagine Joseph's brothers hating him. Imagine the shock of their lives when they saw Joseph. That's real. The person you were jealous of was the person God had appointed for your deliverance. You could not see past your jealousy to look into the mystery of the dream that he saw. Wow. How he was going to deliver you and the rest of the family and the rest of the nation of Israel. That's deep. But God will still humble you because your blessing will come from the person. Wow. That's deep. Are you still there? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. The legalities that surrounded Naaman's condition required him to jump into dirty water. Wow. Dirty water. He must go into dirty water. There are certain conditions, listen to me, they require the use of dirty things. Wow. Some conditions you would have to bath with your urine. Wow. That's deep. That is deep. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Urine in the spirit is powerful. Wow. Oh, you think it's waste, waste product, but it, it's value in the spirit. You can't tell. Wow. Urine can cure madness. Wow. Madness. Dementia. Wow. It can even heal somebody from stroke, type 2 stroke. Wow. That's just deep. Even the leprosy, it can cleanse. Wow. Urine. That is deep. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. But when we share things like this, ah, these guys practicing witchcraft. No. Witches, they understand the laws of the universe. Right. You don't. That's why you are not as powerful as they are. Wow. That's deep. If you're wondering why Satan has all this power, it's because of the laws of the universe he understands. That's real. It's because of the things that he knows that believers don't know. That's real. You are only as powerful as the information you are breathing. That is so real. Are you, t are you still here, somebody? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, you speaking to me, Papa. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. But remember, when God wants to change you, he will bring the solution that you would not like. Wow. That is deep. That's deep. If you conquer your pride, you have really, really won. Wow. Amen. You have really won in life. Amen. Are you still with me? We're here, Papa. Then the Bible says, Naaman was told to jump into the water seven times. Today I'm just doing foundational work. Amen. Thank you, Papa. Hallelujah. Seven times. Why seven times? Why? Why seven times? Why not six? Why not eight? <laughs> because in this universe, there's, there's such a mystery as repetition. Amen. And certain things have to be done a certain number of times. Wow. That's for deep. it to be activated. Amen. When you don't know that, if somebody tells you, go and sweep the house. He says, I've cleaned it. He says, do it again. Okay. Maybe I missed a spot. Then do it another time. Wait a minute. <laughs> Am I your slave? <laughs> because you may not understand the mystery of repetition. Amen. Do you know how perfection comes? Wow. Repetition. It's by repetition. Amen. You can never claim, you know... <laughs> I found out in my study last week that, <laughs> oh, Jesus, when you read something, five minutes later, you have only retained 50%. Wow. Ten minutes later, all you have is 15%. Wow. That's deep. 
So imagine, imagine you're trying to study for an exam. <laughs> and you choose that early morning to go and study. You have problems. <laughs> Amen. This is why you fail. <laughs> Amen. It is not because you are not smart. It is just how the system works. Amen. You are very smart. It's just that you chose the wrong time to study. Hey, I, I, I used to hear. Are we here, Papa? I read that I was shocked. I was like, hey. <laughs> then you begin to program yourself. And the, the, the guy began to explain how you study. And I thought it was so interesting what he was saying. He says, when you study, study for 30 minutes vigorously. Then take a break. Let your mind rest. Come back again and review it. Wow. That's deep. I was like, interesting. There are things that work and there are things that don't work. Learn them. Amen. If you want to be successful in life, learn them. Amen. Are you still with me, somebody? Are we here, Papa? So, why seven times understand the things of the spirit, people? Amen. There is the law of this universe as reputation. And then there is also the law of the numbers. The number of times you do certain things. Wow. There are things that require you to do them three times. Amen. Before you see a manifestation. That's real. There are things that require you to do them four times before you see the manifestation. There are things that require you to do them five times before you see the manifestation. Then there are things that require you to see them seven times, to do them seven times. Amen. Before you see a manifestation. And usually, these are cases that deals with spiritual things, like spiritual problems. Wow. I won't go too much into that today. But usually, you're dealing with cases that have spiritual problems. So sometimes when I give you a prophetic direction, I say, do it seven days or do it for seven weeks. You're like, hey, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> It is because whatever spirit that is controlling that event in your life will never budge. Wow. Until that thing is done seven times. Wow. So the prophet Elijah knew this. That's deep. What was controlling the condition of Naaman needed him to go seven times into Jordan. Wow. Are you still here? I'm here, Papa. Laws of this universe. You say, I don't like to do this thing again and again. That's your, that's your lot now to carry in life. It will be as though there's no solution to it, but it's just because your pride will not let you. Wow. That's deep. Will not let you receive the solution. Are you still with me here? Are we here, Papa? Do you know that per the laws of creation, everything yields after seven times? Wow. That's deep. <laughs> That's the seven times. <laughs> seven times. Amen. Because you and I know that seven is the number of completion and perfection. Amen. Once something gets to the seventh time, even God did not <laughs> start another day or a new week until after the seventh day. Amen. He could have done it after six. He didn't. He could have done it after eight to start a new week. He didn't. It was after the seventh day that he started a new week. Wow. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you speaking to me? So listen to me, people. Are you here? We're here. The mystery of the number of times you do things, any time, you want to perfect something, you should never do it three times. Wow. That's deep. I'm opening you up to the laws of this universe. Amen. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still here? We're here, Papa. If you want to perfect something in your life, you should never do it three times. Never do it four times. It is seven. Wow. Seven is the number of perfection. It is what guarantees that that thing is perfected. That's deep. 
Are you here? We're here, Papa. I'm teaching you this because if I start taking you to the angelic realm. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Jesus. Some of you that want to walk with angels, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You will need to say the name of your angel seven times before the angel appears. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. Are you still with me here? We're here, Papa. Seven is a significant number in this universe. It depicts perfection. Perfection. Wow. And to do something seven times and fail is a sign of a curse. Wow. That's deep. How do I know somebody's under a curse? They've tried to do it seven times. Wow. So sometimes, some people, when they come to me for counseling about certain things, I'll, I'll give them a certain direction. I say, go and do this. Go and do it. They say, ah, nothing. Do it again. <laughs> seven times, you have a problem. Wow. When something is done seven times, you don't see results. It is because there is something else that is coming after you. And usually, it could be that God himself is the one withstanding you. Wow. That's deep. Because there are certain things probably God has told you and you refuse to do. Certain things that he's tried to bring to your attention and you refuse to listen. Wow. And he now stands in your way and says, since you will not listen, I will not also get out of your way. Wow. And that's because he loves you. When he doesn't love you, <laughs> he will let you go. <laughs> and you go fall into the ditch. Wow. Are you still with me, somebody? We're here, Papa. So seven is a significant number in the laws of creation. If you wake up in the morning, I'm giving you different things now. Amen. Thank you, Papa. Hallelujah. I'm just, there's so many laws of creation I'm going to show you throughout this week's. Amen. Maybe Hallelujah. I'll do two weeks of this. Thank you, Jesus. Or three weeks of this. If you wake up in the morning with the number seven in your mind, you just woke up and, you know, throughout that morning, the number you are seeing is seven, seven, seven. That's going to be the most favorable day in that year for you. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Or in that month, you will have the most, the most favor that day. When you wake up in the morning and that number seven is ringing in your spirit continuously, just know you're about to have a wonderful day. Wow. Amen. I'm not talking like, oh, you got up in the morning saying, I think seven, I think seven, I think seven. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about you receive it in the morning. It's like it comes to you. It is the angels that walk with you that are trying to alert you. Be attentive. Something good is coming your way today. Wow. Amen. Amen. These are laws in the universe. They don't want me to teach you these things. But that's what makes you lose on your seasons or manifestations. Wow. That's so true. On your fortunes. So imagine, anytime I wake up and I see the number seven, ah, money is coming. Something good. I don't know what it is, but something good is coming. Amen. Amen. So you can now anticipate things in your life. You are no longer waking every morning with fear. You don't know what thing, what's going to befall you today. That's not the way a Christian should rise up in the morning. You should wake up as a lion every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you know the laws of this universe. Amen. That guarantees a fruitful day. Amen. I will show you so many things. Don't, don't worry. Hallelujah. There are the signals from heaven every morning, every morning. When I wake up and I notice a certain signal, I know something good is about to happen. Wow. There are many of them, but we miss them. Wow. Because we, we are not taught these things in church. That's real. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Seven. Seven. Seven years of plenty. Why seven years of plenty? Wow. And then when the seven years of, when, when the family is ending, it's also seven years. Why not eight? Wow. Perfection. That's how far God can go. That's the When God brings blessings to you, your inheritance that you should get waits for you until seven years it expires. Wow. Everything you're supposed to get now, if you don't get it, if it came today, if you don't get it, you have seven years to get it. Wow. If you miss it within that seven years, you will never get that blessing again. That's the... Are you here? We're here, Papa. <laughs> you will never see it again. Just wait for the next seven years, the blessing that come from, <laughs> from those other seven years. Amen. So, if you don't receive all that you're supposed to receive in life within a certain period, after seven years, it doesn't show up again. Wow. wow. There deep. are consequences when you don't understand the laws of creation. Amen. That's why I want to train God's people. Amen. To understand the patterns of life. Hallelujah. So you can preserve your inheritance. That's right. You can gain them. Amen. Every seven years, that's what you should get. Every seven years. Every seven years. Every seven years. Amen. There's also what is known in the Hebrew culture as the seven-year period. Mm. It's known as the Shemitah year. Wow. And in that year, every debt should be canceled. Amen. Amen. Every debt. Don't you realize that that also happens in this, uh, in the United States? Wow. Every debt should be canceled. Your credit is renewed every seven years. Wow. It is a system of operation. Why did they choose seven years? It's a system in the universe. Wow. Things are renewed every seven years. That's deep. That's deep. Debts are forgiven every seven years. Amen. It is the reason why when they ask Jesus, hey, Lord Jesus, how many times can somebody sin against us? And we forgive them. He says seven times 70. Wow. Wow. Oh, it was not just a number he just came up with to give you an answer that he knew you would never be able to meet. <laughs> no. It is actually the laws in the heavens. In a day, you can only be forgiven seven times, 70 times. Wow. Somebody say, but nobody can commit sin that much in a day. You don't know people. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how many sins you commit every day. Wow. That's deep. That's why his messes are new every morning. You don't understand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because if they are not, the crimes you commit in the spirit, you will have no safety net. Wow. That's why his mercies are new every morning. Understand it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when Jesus is saying seven times 70, he's using a, a number for a reason. Wow. That number is how far you can go. In committing crimes every day. Wow. According to the law court system of heaven. Are you still with me, somebody? Always here, Papa. Seven is significant. And if you were born on the seven, on the 16, on the 25th, that also has something to do in your life. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's much to say. We'll go into details of your birth. Hallelujah. Amen. Someday, Amen. I will speak on everything about your date of birth. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We have a prophet. So you can understand the patterns of God for your life. Amen. All those who have been born on the seventh, on the sixteenth, on the twenty-first, they have a similar experiences in life. Wow, that's deep.
And if I begin to tell you the things that come to them, we will not live here. <laughs> wow. That's deep. Are you still some? Are you here, somebody? We're here, Papa. You still here? We're here, Papa. One of the things that happened to these people is that whatever they put their hands to do will never fail. Wow. Oh, that's but deep. if you don't know this, the devil will use that ignorance wow. of it. And make you begin to feel like, ah, I'm afraid. This may not work. You. It doesn't matter what you decide to do. Whatever you decide to do. Even if it was another person's work. <laughs> it doesn't fail. Wow. That's just the vibration God gave them. Wow. Amen. Things don't fail in their hands. But if you don't know the laws of the universe, you would walk as though you are another kind of person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good seeing you. God bless you. Take something you want to give to God. And I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All creation I see, all creation I see. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And all creation I sing, all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. I don't know why they're letting me get out of camera. It's the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing. All creation I sing. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Lift up your seat to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree that every seed carries results with it. As they enter into the month of August, I decree that August will be a month of results for you. I said August will be a month of results. Amen. I receive it. Hallelujah. May everything that you have been doing produce this month of August. Amen. Thank you. I say, may you find results this month of August. I receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the seed you bring before the Lord today channel every result your way in this month. Amen. I receive. I bless the work of your hands. Amen. It shall produce greatly. I receive. I said, it shall produce greatly. I receive. I receive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive all the inheritance of your life. 
I receive. May you not miss out on divine opportunities. Thank you, Jesus. In this month. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're ready for results, I want to see your excitement. Amen. Hallelujah. We ready. We ready. Listen to me. When you start walking in August, all you need to do is just be calm. Amen. No matter what is happening, no matter what you see happening, don't be moved. Amen. Are you listening to me? Uh, we're here, Papa. Don't be moved. If something happens and it makes you afraid, don't be moved. Amen. If you went for an interview and they told you, oh, uh, we didn't receive you, don't worry. Relax. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Oh, yeah. We're here, Papa. Whatever does not work out in August, believe me when I tell you, you will see it manifest Amen. the way it should manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be blinded by the nose. Yes. Are you still there? Yes. We're here, Papa. Yes. I'm speaking prophetically. Amen. Amen. Even if they reject you, don't be afraid. Amen. Even if they say you're not what we're looking for, don't be afraid. Amen. It will rearrange your cosmic alignment. Amen. And set you up for something much better than what you are missing there. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? We're here, Papa. May God turn every event around for your good. I receive it. I say, may God turn every event around for your good. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed. I receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, media, don't leave. Wait for me after service. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Shalom. Amen. You can come and give. You can come and give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Christ Thank you, Jesus. Foundation. To give. Hallelujah. The rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful to generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby.